Today I want to show you how to submit lens approval using a mobile app. And that mobile app is going to be KittyHawk. And KittyHawk is the app that I've been using for uh, about a year now. Uh, before that I was using AirMap. I'm actually going to tell you this straight right now. Uh, please do not use AirMap. Um, there, there are several reasons not to use AirMap. One is to uh, not support a company that's actually trying to take away uh, some uh, some privileges from us uh, remote pilots and also because quite frankly it's uh, been proven several times that it contains incorrect information. So Kitty Hawk is easy, it's free and I'm going to show you right here on the App Store how to download it. You're just going to go and type Kitty Hawk and then it should really show up as one of the first one right here and you'll see it here on the right side. I'm going to type on it and then here's the detail of the app itself. Now, there's several things you can do with Kitty Hawk. You can actually submit airspace approval uh, via Lance and you can also uh, take a look at uh, the weather. So this app is pretty good. I can open it from here. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the background here. Here's Kitty Hawk and I'm going to tap on it and, um, and here it is. Now, when you first log in the very first time, you're going to need to create an account, which is free. So I'm going to let you guys do that. And uh, there you go. Now I'm logged in. Now it's loading up the map. This is where I live in Prescott, as you know. And um, we can do several things in here. We can actually see the map. See the map up here? It has different colors. By the way, the red is where you're not going to be able to fly. And then the green and yellow is going to have different altitude. Uh, we, can, we can move around a little bit. You can see that uh, Flagstaff, we've talked about this in the course. Uh, Flagstaff is actually a non-Lance facility, so you can see it's all grayed out, so it means you can't use Lance in that area. And then you're going to have, oops, you're going to have another one right here, which is Winslow, and Winslow is, uh, is also available in Lance. So several things that you can see in here. The thing I want to really show you is how to submit uh, Lance approval. So uh, the one thing that we can do is take a look at the weather real quick. You can see here uh, 44 degrees, the wind, and uh, the 16 miles an hour of gust, which is not something that I would definitely want to fly in. It's been windy the last couple of days. Visibility is in here, the humidity, the cloud coverage, the daylight. It gives you a whole bunch of information in here. And then uh, at the bottom, there is a plus button. So this plus button is what I'm going to push. And when I push it, you can see I can create a mission or I can request Lance authorization. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create Lance authorization, request Lance authorization. I'm going to do that in a second. First, I want to kind of go over the map capability of this app because that's the first step. That's what I would do first is I would take a look at the map. So here where you say airspace caution map, I'm going to click on that maps and it's going to load up a, a, just a bigger map um, onto my uh, onto my screen. And you can see again, you can see the, the grid right here. And what I can do is I can, uh, and I live outside of the class D airspace, but I can go right here and tap on any part of the map. I can just tap the map right here and it tells me a latitude and longitude and it tells me a little warning. So if I tap on that blue area right here, it opens up a map and it says UAS facility maps, authorization required, lens available to 400 feet. PRC is the airport, KPRC, that's where uh, Prescott is, is. See this yellow one right here? I'm going to tap on the yellow one and create a little um, pin. And then again, I can tap on it. And that says authorization required, lens available to 250 feet. I can go even more to the right into that red one and then that says lands available to zero feet. So we can't really fly in there. Now we can, there is a video available also after this one that shows you how to submit lands approval in zero airspace. But if we want immediate approval, we have to fly within one of these grid that doesn't say zero. So I'm gonna show you how to fly around that lake. Actually that lake right here um, is Watson Lake and I actually do fly there quite a bit. So I'm gonna show you how to submit one in here and then um, we're gonna go back. That was just the kind of the planning phase if you want. And then what I'm gonna do is just tap on the add and again, request lands authorization. So once I get there, the screen surprisingly goes into this mode, which is weird, but um, that's my name is on here. Your phone number, you're going to have to get verified. Your 107 certificate number is going to have to go in there as well. By the way, Lance is only available to 107 pilots for now. For now, this may change with the new FA Reauthorization Act. And then the next thing we're going to do is go next. Next, we get to the details, date and time. I'm going to fly today at 10 a.m. Now, this is a fake one, but just to show you, 
duration is going to be one hour and click OK. Aircraft optional, you can put your drone in here if you want. Now notice in the note it says lens authorization are currently not available for operation more than 90 days in advance, so you can plan 90 days in advance. Operation, operations beyond civil twilights, 30 minutes before sunrise and 30 minutes after sunset. Simultaneous flights in the same area or multi-drone swarms, or if you have more than one commercially registered aircraft, okay? So click next, and then we're gonna pick the area. We're going to pick the area. I'm going to zoom out. I don't want to fly around my house. I want to fly around Watson. So I can do this ahead of time. Now, what you notice at the same time is as I'm moving the map around, notice what the little needle does at the bottom. It is showing me the maximum ceiling um, for auto approval. So if you remember, I was in that yellow area. The yellow area was 250. If I go over here, then it goes down to zero. If I go back up into this area right here, back 200, and then here, 350 and in this area, 150. So you can see we can move around and maybe even do our planning that way um, to figure out how, how high we want to fly. So I'm going to do uh, draw my flight area. So I'm going to tap on that button, draw flight area. And here's a square and we can just tap in the corner and hold. And as we tap and hold, we can move the corner of the button. This area is too large. Okay, oops, I messed it up. I'm going to go back here like this and then I'm going to go right here and I'm going to extend it. And you notice what I did is I actually, I keep making it too large. And uh, you notice what I actually did is I extended over a block that's not 400 feet. So now you say maximum, you see maximum ceiling for auto approval is at 250. So I can really only fly up to 250. Here, I'm going to have to drag this little a ticker here to the altitude that I want to fly. If I want to fly at 400 feet in that area, I'm going to need special approval because I'm flying over the grid, over the maximum allowed grid. Now, if I want to fly at 250, then I should be pretty good uh, without, and, and it should get automatic approval. If I wanted to fly at 400 feet where it says 400 feet and then at 250 where it says 250, I would submit two different requests. So I would submit one that's limited to this area right here of 400 feet. Then I would do this at 400 feet. And then I would do a new flight area that's gonna be located on the uh, 250 zone and do that. So I'm gonna keep it like this for now. This is just a, a test. Now you see the resources here at the bottom. It gives us NOTAMs, it gives us TFR information so we can uh, look at our TFRs right here. I'm gonna click next. And then here it asks us a few things. Operator is a Part 101 certified pilot. Absolutely. Operator will follow all the Part 107 rules and guidelines. Absolutely as well. Operator will maintain visual line of sight. That's a requirement. And actually, funny enough, it's a part of the 107 rules and guidelines. But operator will limit the aircraft speed to less than 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I wish I could fly that fast. Operator will fly only when the weather is compliant. And then operator is compliant with the weight of less than 55 pounds. And then uh, will comply with any airspace restriction and temporary flight restriction. Absolutely. Then you say yes, I agree with the terms, and then we move on to the next part, which is the final part. Here it says eligible for auto approval, and uh, we can just click submit, and then we will get a text message basically telling us that we have been approved. And that's it. Then uh, you're done. You can go fly. You have approval. I hope this helped. Again, uh, please use Kitty Hawk. Great app. By the way, the FAA has asked Kitty Hawk to help them redesign the Before You Fly app. So that's a good sign that uh, they're going to this provider. So this is it. I'll see you guys next time.